The movie begins with our protagonist, Jeannie Burns. She is late to a surprise party and she's talking to her coworker on the phone. He asks her what she's wearing because she has to impress a couple, so they wouldn't notice that she's not a real estate agent. The plan is for her to go and represent herself as an agent, but the whole thing is that there's a surprise waiting for the old couple to celebrate their anniversary. The plan goes smoothly and Jeannie leads them into the room where the surprise is. The couple is happy and the plan to sell the house is successful. Jeannie goes home after the party and calls her coworker. He thanks her and congratulates her on another successful party. Later on in the day, we see Jeannie in a car with her friend Danny. It is Danny's birthday, and he asks her why she hasn't thrown him a surprise yet. Jeannie says some lame excuse but a police siren cuts her off and Danny pulls over. The cop asks for legal documents and Danny can't seem to find them. He is asked to step out of the vehicle, but begs the cop to let him go because it is his birthday. They end up at the police station and Danny is separated from Jeannie. He sits in the hall and waits to be released, but a cop calls him and tells him that he's arrested. Right as Danny opens the door a huge crowd of people yell surprise to him and he realizes that the whole situation had been a plan. Danny is so relieved that he's not in trouble, and he smiles at Jeannie once he sees her in the crowd. The next morning arrives and Jeannie is awoken by her alarm. She rushes to get ready as she realizes that she's late to work. She puts her hair in a messy bun and puts on a new Burberry dress, but doesn't notice that the tag is still on. She goes into her local cafe and orders the usual. A guy behind her in line notices the tag and rips it off the dress. She takes back her tag and puts it in her purse as she moves to the other counter to get her coffee. She takes a bunch of sugar packets and stuffs them in her purse. The guy comes to her and laughs about it, which annoys Jeannie and she slides artificial sweetener into his pocket, before she leaves with a cheeky smile on her face. She arrives at work and hands her coworker his coffee. Jeannie asks Stephen about the first time he walked into the office. She remembers thinking that he is so handsome and that she had finally found the man of her life. Stephen laughs about it and hugs her. She asks him if he ever thought of her in that way and he says no. She had read that 66% of gay men end up in a relationship with women, so she was wondering if she had a chance. Stephen shakes his head in disagreement and Jeannie tells him to get over himself because she was just joking. They get back to work. We see a girl with her grandmother walking down the street. The girl is playing with a lemon and she suddenly drops it. Jeannie grabs the lemon and hands it back to the little girl. She tells her when life gives you lemons you should squeeze out the good from it. The little girl smiles and turns to her grandma. Her grandma asks Jeannie whether she lived on that street. Jeannie says yes and even invites them to come for a cup of coffee sometime. She says goodbye to the ladies and heads to the supermarket. As looking through some free samples at the supermarket, the guy from the cafe greets her. She says hello to him but quickly goes away. She is looking through the vegetable and he comes to her again. He tells her that he has made a reservation for dinner on aisle 7, and he would love to take her there with his cart. Jeannie says no as she laughs but the guy is persistent and says that he will annoy her until she says yes. She ends up saying yes because she wants him to shut up. She hops on his cart and off they go to their reservation. He brings her to another free sample food stand. They try the samples and the guy ends up spitting them out. He introduces himself as Jeff Bachman and asks Jeannie for a meal with menus. She says that she needs to go back to her cart and Jeff rides her to it. His persistence is evident, as she invites Jeannie to lunch one more time and hopes that she will say yes. She smiles and tells him that he doesn't give up and says yes only for that reason. They agree on meeting on Wednesday at the Sky Blue Cafe for lunch. Jeannie goes to her mother's the next morning. She has breakfast with them and opens up about the things going on in her life at the moment. She tells them about the lunch date with Jeff and they ask her about her friend Denny. They want her to be with him and even try to change her mind about him. She tells them that she doesn't see Danny in that way and that they need to let it go. Her stepfather mentions the time he and her mother fell in love. Jeannie smiles and mentions the first time that he had come to see her mother and the days is that he brought for her. She says that they reminded her of her dad. The atmosphere changes and her mother goes quiet. She asks her whether she has said something wrong, and her mother answers with a quiet no. Jeannie turns to her stepfather and says that she appreciates him, but the reason she wanted to see them was that her father's accident has been upsetting her even more than ever. Her mother says that they are past the point of talking about that, and Jeannie asks her whether she's ready to talk about it, because she avoids the conversation every time it's mentioned. Her mother leaves the room as Jeannie continues to scream at her. We see her in her bedroom later on. She's thinking about the situation when Danny walks in an elephant costume. He hands her a latte and they talk about their plans. They are interrupted by a doorbell ring and Jeannie gets excited, because there's a tick or treater kid at her door. She opens the door and is met with a sad memory of one specific Halloween when she was a child. It flashes back to that scene, and we see a young Jeannie walking with her friends. Her Aunt Dottie's car stops in front of her and she tells her to come into the car. Jeannie walks in and sees her aunt upset and crying. She asks her what's wrong, and she tells her that her father had been in a plane accident and that he had unfortunately passed away. It flashes back to the present and we see the little girl looking at Jeannie confused. Jeannie asks the girl where her grandma was and she says that she was sick. She asks her about her parents and the little girl reveals that her mother had passed away. 
and that's the reason they moved there. Danny saves the conversation by putting all the candy into the little girl's basket. Jeannie suggests that they all go trick-or-treating and they head to the adventure. Some days pass by and we see Jeannie walking to the cafe, ready to go on her date. She sees Jeff with a woman by his side. She is rubbing his shoulders with a smile on her face. This doesn't sit well with Jeannie and she asks him whether they are speed dating or not. Jeff smiles and says that the girl is his sister's friend. Grace tells him that he doesn't have a sister and he asks her how she knew that. Grace catches him in a lie by saying she didn't. And Jeff laughs in defeat. He asks her whether she considered coming to the date and she says no. He asks her whether she sees their relationship going anywhere. And her answer is no because he is a player. She goes on guessing what Jeff does for a living and assumes that he is a nightclub owner. Jeff shuts her up by giving her his business card. And she is surprised to find out that Jeff is a plastic surgeon. She tells him that she's very impressed. And he tells her that she is a very tough person. That depends on your tolerance, says Jeannie, and Jeff doesn't give in and says that he has a high tolerance. Both of them walk out of the date with a smile on their faces. Jeff invites Jeannie to another date, a dinner on the weekend but Jeannie declines, and says that she's sure she'll see him around. She meets her friend Danny later on in the day for their regular bike ride in the park. She notices that Denny is wearing a shirt that they picked out and Denny says that the girl he's seeing, Kate, hates the shirt. Jeannie laughs and asks him how long has he been with Kate. Danny says that it has been three weeks and it is going great. There's no drama, it's always fun and their love life is amazing. Jeannie makes fun of him and says that his relationship isn't going to last long. He tells her that at least he has someone and asks her whether there's anyone she doesn't turn down. They sit down to eat and Jeannie says that she's looking for something different. Danny asks what that different is. She looks down at her plate and says that she wants the full plate in her love life. The healthy, the warm comfort, and just good love life in general. How do you know that you're in love? Says Jeannie. Denny answers her by saying love is about being there, staying even when it gets most difficult. Jeannie goes to work the next day, and her boss pitches the idea of a billboard advertisement. He drags her out of the office and takes her to a spot. They start talking about expanding their business, and that's when Jeannie's friend Lori yells surprise from behind her. Jeannie is confused but she realizes once she lifts her head, and sees a billboard of their business. Stephen tells her that this is the best birthday surprise she will ever experience, and Lori tells her that she is off of work early so they can celebrate her birthday. Jeannie takes her usual bike ride the next day but she's surprised to run into Jeff. She sees him coaching some kids on how to play football. He spots her looking at him and goes to her. He asks to give a detour and even though she says no he changes her mind. They have a deep conversation where Jeff opens up about his mother, and the fact that he and his brother were afraid of her, because she was a pretty violent alcoholic. Jeannie says that she's sorry about that and she asks about his father. Jeff says that his father had taken off with a blonde girl. He looks Jeannie in the eyes and says that he had never told anyone his story, and that he feels like he can be himself around her. Jeannie gets overwhelmed and leaves. She sits by a tree with her bike next to her and waits for Danny. He comes with the girl that he is seeing, and Kate is so excited to meet Jeannie that she jumps up and down like a kid. They ride south and as time passes Jeannie gets more and more annoyed by Kate. At the end of the ride, Kate invites Jeannie to join them for lunch. Jeannie declines the offer by saying that she is going shopping. Because she has a date with a guy, even though she doesn't. She decides to give Jeff a chance and after some time she finds herself in love. Everything goes well for the new couple but she seems to have distanced herself from Denny. The day for the Ravinia night comes, and we see Jeannie getting ready for it with Lori by her side. Lori asks her about the play and Jeannie says that Jeff had bought the tickets. Lori looks at her with a sad look in her eyes, and Jeannie asks her what the problem is. Her friend says that she feels sad because she used to go with Danny on these nights, but that has changed and she hardly even talks to him. Jeannie says that both of them had found their people and that had pushed their friendship away. She tells Lori that she should be happy for her, because she's excited about the romantic part as well, now that she has a boyfriend. At the event, Jeannie starts talking about how she understands how people fall in love, and Jeff notices that she's talking about herself. She tells Jeff indirectly that she's in love with him. Jeff doesn't waste no time and says I love you to her. She gets overwhelmed by Jeff's honesty again, and excuses herself by saying that she needs to go to the bathroom. On the way to it, Jeannie sees Danny and Kate cuddled up on a blanket and gets furious. She tells Stephen the whole situation the next day. She tells him how Jeff had told her that he loves her and that she was happy about it. But seeing Danny and Kate together made her jealous. She says that she loves Jeff but she finds herself wondering when and how are they going to break up. She asks Stephen for advice and he tells her to let it all play out. She'll figure it out with time. Every time Jeannie is stressed she binges, while having the conversation with Stephen. We see her eating an entire portion of large fries in just two minutes. Stephen notices that but he doesn't say anything. After dinner, Jeff gives Jeannie a necklace. He says that it's about their present and future. He also says that she needs to work on her fears, because he will be traveling a lot soon and he wants her to come and visit him. 
She thanks him for the necklace and goes to look at it in the mirror. In the middle of the night, Jeannie goes to her fridge and starts binging again. She spends the rest of her night eating and goes straight to work in the morning. She talks to Lori on the phone and tells her about the situation. She tells her that despite knowing about her situation with flying, Jeff had asked her to come to visit him, because love will make her do things she would never consider. Lori says that love should make Jeff accept Jeannie as she is. Jeannie arrives at work looking like a mess, and tries to sneak in without being noticed. Her attempt fails because Steven sees her and he goes to talk to her. He tells her that there's a big producer, who has sent his assistant to ask them to plan a surprise wedding for his bride. Jeannie asks who it is but Steven says that the assistant won't tell him. Steven drags Jeannie to the assistant even though she looks like a mess. The assistant tells them that he works for Quentin Tarantino and both Jeannie and Steven are in shock. He asks them to plan a wedding on a given day and wants everyone to be surprised, even the guests. He tells them the wedding should be a perfect sleek wedding and over the top. Jeannie keeps asking about the bride and the assistant tells her that she needs to make the wedding like a dream, and she doesn't need to make anything less. The wedding dress will arrive at their office, and because it's a surprise Jeannie will have to try the dress on. Jeannie isn't fond of the idea and even goes to tell the assistant off, but she is stopped by Stephen who wants to save their job. After the assistant leaves, Jeannie and Stephen sit down to come up with the best wedding for the bride. Jeannie says that there needs to be something that will make the bride stay, and Stephen says that it should be something that will make sense. An idea pops into Jeannie's head immediately and she tells Stephen that he is a genius. Stephen agrees but he's confused as to what the idea is. Jeannie uses the fact that the groom is a producer. She says that he will tell everyone that he is filming a movie where the last scene is his big wedding, so the guests will think that it's just a movie scene. As for the bride, he will tell his fiancée that the lead actress's flight got delayed, so she will have to take part in that role. The bride will for sure want to marry him, because she will see herself in a wedding dress, and that will upset her because she will think that it's not real. She will get to the aisle and someone will grab her arm and say surprise. She will turn her head only to see her father standing next to her. Speechless, she walks down the aisle and sees faces turning towards her. Those faces are the faces of her loved ones. She will look at the altar and see that her love is there. He will slowly walk up to her, get on his knees and say will you marry me. What had once been a dream will become a reality for the bride and she will say yes. Stephen smiles in success. Jeannie decides to pay a visit to Jeff in his office later in the afternoon. But she's surprised to find out that Jeff had lied to her about having meetings all day. She arrives at the office with a basket of goodies in her hand and sees Tanya, Jeff's assistant there. She says that she has brought some goodies to make all the boring meetings better. Tanya says that they don't have any meetings for the day and the office is empty because everyone's at lunch. Jeannie is upset but doesn't show it as she tells Tanya she'll be back later. She comes back later and sees Jeff in his office. She asks him why he hasn't answered her calls and he says that he had been busy. She tells him that she knows that he didn't have staff meetings that day, and Jeff asks her whether she's accusing him of something or not. She asks him how would he react in this situation, and Jeff says that he will give her the benefit of the doubt. He had mistaken the date of the meeting and he had been too busy to call. That's all there is. Jeannie agrees with him and apologizes. She hugs him and leaves. The situation puts Jeannie in thought and she decides to call her old friend, Denny. They walk in the park like they once used to do regularly and have a conversation. Jeannie tells him that she had thought that he hated her and Danny asks her why she always assumes the worst. Jeannie says that she doesn't know why she always does that. She asks Danny what he would do in a situation where Kate would question him about something. He says that he will reassure her and stay. He says that if you're in love with the right person, you'll trust yourself enough to be in it. The day of Jeannie and Jeff's anniversary comes and Jeannie decides to surprise him. She goes over to his apartment with balloons and a picture of them. He opens the door and doesn't even acknowledge her as he says that his game will be over soon. Jeannie is confused and Jeff notices that. He tells her to relax because she will receive attention later. Jeannie doesn't want attention, she wants at least a thank you. Jeff accuses her of yelling and getting mad at him. Jeannie says that she's not yelling or mad at him, she's just upset. Jeff tells her she's either going to drop it or go. She exits his apartment but comes back shortly and knocks on his door. He doesn't answer so she slides down the door and sits on the frame. This brings back another bad memory for her, as we see her young self lying in front of her mother's room, crying at the door. Her aunt comes and tells her that she needs to go to bed and poor Jeannie asks her when her mother was going to come out. Her aunt says that she isn't sure and that makes young Jeannie cry even harder. We are back to the present as we hear knocking on the door. Jeannie is knocking on Lori's door. Lori opens the door and Jeannie storms in with cookie fries in her hand. She sees mac and cheese on Lori's counter and attacks it. Jeannie ends up eating almost everything from the fridge and that worries Lori. She tells her about a therapist and Jeannie tells her not to be ridiculous, she's probably getting her period soon and that's why she's eating so much. Some time passes and Jeannie continues to eat, she doesn't even fit into her old clothes anymore. She finally decides to go to the therapist her friends had recommended. She goes into the office and sits down. The therapist starts asking her about her problem and Jeannie says that she has been binging a lot lately. She says that she works out and diet to lose weight but finds herself binging often. 
The therapist asks about stress, and Jeannie says that she hasn't been having any stress lately. She asks to be given a diet that will sort out her eating again. Binging is not a diet problem, it's a feelings problem, says the therapist. Jeannie is in denial, so the therapist uses the example of a little girl. She asks her what a little girl would do if she was not receiving attention. She will throw a tantrum, says Jeannie. The therapist asks her for a way to calm her down and Jeannie's answer is with food. This upsets the therapist and she says that the little girl needs to be heard and acknowledged, because that will calm her down. She tells her that there's a little genie in her and when she gets upset she sends little cravings to her belly. She asks her what she does in such a situation. Jeannie says that she eats and then she diets and that whole process is repeated. The therapist says that the little girl isn't hurt at all. Jeannie's feelings have to be acknowledged, and she needs to have them. Jeannie says that she doesn't have many feelings, but the therapist cuts her off by saying that her binging is proof of that. Jeannie goes on to say that if the little girl is the reason she's binging, then she hates her. Her therapist gets upset and tells her that she doesn't hate that little girl, she loves her and needs to nurture her, just not with food. The next time she gets a craving she's going to put that little girl on a timeout. Jeannie has to go to dinner with Kate and Danny, along with her boyfriend as well. She tells Stephen that she can't stand Kate and she doesn't want to go. They go to dinner and after some time they give them their bill, but it is split between couples. The waiter had thought that Danny and Jeannie were one couple, and Jeff and Kate were the other one. All of them feel awkward but laugh about it as there's nothing else to do. Jeannie goes to her therapist appointment and finds a rather interesting way of coping with her binging. She is told that every time she is considering binging, she should think about the reason why she had ever experienced a craving. She should associate her food with a person, has that person made her binge, and is that the reason why she has a craving. Her cravings are all of the feelings she's processing. Her therapist tells her that she should eat when she's hungry, and that binging is different from that. Jeannie asks what if she just loves food too much. The therapist takes a platter of cookies and offers her one. Jeannie says no and that's when her therapist says that she isn't addicted to food, and that she can say no to it, so no, she doesn't love food too much. She listens to her therapist's method and tries it with Steven. He is eating a Twizzler and she asks him where he had gotten them from. She waits for a beep, a feeling of some sort. When she realizes there isn't any beeping, she says that she doesn't want a Twizzler and doesn't have a craving. She's happy about it because she thinks she's found the answer to her binging. She's confused again and gives into the craving as she chews on a Twizzler. Jeannie gets stressed even more because Jeff keeps canceling their plans all the time. But he acts like he loves so she's confused as to what's going on. Her ranting is interrupted by her mother coming into the office. She greets both of them and hands Jeannie a box. In that box is old stuff, her dad's belonging. Jeannie gets upset and asks her mother why she doesn't want them anymore. Her mother explains that she had thought that they would mean more to her. Steven tries to loosen the situation by taking a selfie with an old camera, but Jeannie isn't having any of it. She pushes Steven and tells him to stop it. Her mother hands her a smaller box. She tells her that she was going to keep it until she got married, but since she's giving everything else, this would go to her as well. Jeannie opens up the box and sees a beautiful necklace. She is upset so she starts yelling at her mother. She says that she isn't getting married, and that she can't believe that her mother is parting with her father's stuff like she doesn't care. As if one disaster wasn't enough, Stephen receives a call from Quentin's assistant, calling the wedding off. Jeannie gets even more upset and starts cursing the guy out, but Stephen has sad look on his face. Jeannie goes back to Jeff's apartment only to find him working from home with a girl. She doesn't want to bother them, so she just goes into his bedroom to put the shirts that she had brought on the hangers. She gets into his room and sees the girl's suitcase wide open. Her heart drops and she rushes to the closet to hide in it. After some time Jeff comes into the closet and sees that Jeannie's crying. She starts asking him about the suitcase and Jeff tells her that she had been on a run so she needed to shower. Jeannie doesn't believe him that nothing had happened, because he didn't return her calls or texts, and when she comes to visit him that is what she sees. Jeff manipulates her into believing that nothing was going on. He says that he needs to take the girl to the airport and Jeannie offers to come with him. He says no and Jeannie loses it. She starts crying and begging him to stay, but he tells her that she's going to end their relationship if she lets her issues come in the way. He tells her that he loves her but no one would want to live in such a way. He leaves and she starts crying even more. She goes home and falls asleep. She is awoken by a text from Jeff, telling her that they have a rescue relationship date tomorrow. They have a good time and their relationship seems to be better. Jeff makes her go on a ride that makes her nauseous. She calls her therapist and doubts if Jeff's the one by using the beeping method. Her therapist calms her down and tells her to splash some cold water on her face. A woman comes into the stall because she couldn't wait anymore. She asks Jeannie if she's having boy problems. Jeannie says and the woman tells her to dump him. Jeannie thinks that the problem's in her and starts crying, saying that Jeff may be every girl's dream. The woman tells her that she's crying on the bathroom floor, that's not anyone's dream. They finish the date and Jeff drives her home. Jeannie continues binging but justifies it by saying that she recognizes the emotion she's feeling at that moment. 
She gets a call from her friend Lori who invites her to make a gag gift for a bachelorette party. The two friends catch up, and Jeannie tells her everything about the problems she's been having with Jeff. Jeannie and Danny sit down for a dinner and he tells her that Kate wants an engagement. Jeannie flips out he asks him does he even love her, and he asks her whether she's in love with Jeff. She gets even more pissed off, and tells him to stop not answering her questions. She tells him that her relationship is tough but at least she's working on it. A waitress comes at that moment and asks Danny to open up the blinds. She asks them whether they're ready to order and Jeannie flips out again when Danny doesn't order something light. She insults him saying that he's just like the other guys. Danny asks her why she's acting that way, is it because she doesn't want him to marry Kate? He begs her to say it if that's the reason. Kate catches a glance of a surprise truck outside the restaurant, and gets confused because she hadn't done it. She is cut off by a text from Casey's grandmother. She had fallen on her head and her grandma didn't know what to do. Donnie offers to take Jeannie there and they head out immediately. They arrive and see that the little girl is fine, all she has to do is rest. Jeannie goes to a restaurant with Lori and they order the usual. Chocolate cake for Jeannie and carrot cake for Lori. Lori notices that Jeannie is upset and asks her what's wrong. She tells her that she got into a fight with Jeff, because he was too busy to come to visit Casey. The fight had resulted in him cancelling the weekend plans. She says that she has to stop getting mad at him because there are some things he cannot control. Her friend asks her about the suitcase and Jeannie tells her that she trusts him. The cakes arrive and Lori tells Jeannie that she had turned into one of those stupid and pathetic women they used to hate. She wants her confident friend back, and even if Jeff's being truthful she has been so unhappy. Jeannie switches the cakes and says that she has replaced Jeff. Lori says that it's a stupid idea and asks for a switch back. Jeannie says no and says that she will try the cake either way, meaning she will break up with Jeff. Lori takes a bite of the chocolate cake and Jeannie is left with carrot cake. She tries it and ends up liking it. Jeannie finds herself in conversation with Steven's weird assistant. She asks her what she does when she's hurt and the girl says that she cries. She says that she dwells on the situation and that it cleanses her out. Jeannie assumes that she doesn't cry at the office, and the girl tells her that she does every time she puts a cup of coffee on her desk. Jeannie feels awful and starts apologizing. The girl accepts her apology and thanks her. Jeannie goes to her therapist appointment and vents about how much she misses Jeff. Her therapist asks her whether she's binging and Jeannie says no. She tells her well done because she can manage the situation. Jeannie goes back to work only to find out that the wedding is back on. The dress is there and Steven tells Jeannie to try the dress. She puts it on and goes to Steven to show it. He tells her that the dress looks beautiful on her. The day of the wedding comes and Steven tells Jeannie that the wedding's off. She tells him that they cannot tell the guests to go home because it'll be humiliating. Their plan is for Jeannie to be the bride and Steven the groom. The guests already think that it's a movie shoot so it's all good. They get ready and Jeannie looks at herself in the mirror. Tears build up in her eyes as she remembers that it's a real wedding. She goes to the roof to gather herself. A girl helps her get ready and even puts on her mother's necklace. Jeannie is ready to walk down the aisle. Someone comes and grabs her arm and whispers surprise to her. She turns her head and sees her stepfather next to her. She can't believe it. The door opens and Steven comes in a tuxedo. Jeannie sees Jeff standing at the altar and as she gets close to him, sees the faces of her loved ones. She gets to him and asks how he managed to step the whole thing up. She finds out that Quentin's wedding was her wedding. She tells Jeff that the wedding was cancelled before they broke up. And Jeff says that they had some difficulties, and even though he got distracted he loves her. He gets down on his knee and asks Jeannie to marry him. At that moment Lori comes in with a giant cake. She tells her that it's half chocolate, half carrot cake and that was her wedding gift to her. Jeannie realizes what Lori is trying to say by bringing the cake and turns to Jeff. She asks him what has changed, Jeff says everything and that they can have it all. She just needs to put her insecurities aside. Jeannie tells him that the fact that she voices her opinions does not make her insecure. The only thing that had made her insecure was him. She realizes that the girl Jeff worked with from home was not there for work, she was staying at his apartment. Jeff tells her that they have to face forward, he tells her to look around, and he had done that all for her because he loves her. She tells him that she loves him, but she loves herself more as she walks away from him. Jeannie goes outside for some fresh air. Danny comes after her, and she applauds his ability to keep the wedding a secret from her. He says that he wanted to tell her but he couldn't. He had a feeling when he received Steven's letter about the wedding, and he wanted to tell her his feeling when they went out for lunch, but Casey got hurt so he couldn't. He stopped crying because if she wanted to marry Jeff, he had to let that happen. He had broken up with Kate because he felt wrong waiting for Jeannie in the meantime. Danny tells her that it would be a shame to waste an all-paid-for wedding, so he would love a dance with the bride. They laugh and share a kiss. The search has come to an end because both of them had found their person.